Hello, and welcome to the How to Choose Happiness and Freedom Show. I'm your host, Lauren Foster, happiness teacher and founder of Be Happy First. As a certified life mastery consultant, masters of wisdom and meditation teacher, and primal health coach, I'm on a mission to help 1 million women learn to be happy and free on purpose, healthy, wealthy, and joyfully living life on your own terms. Happiness is a choice, and you can always choose to be happy first. Thanks so much for being here. Now on to today's episode. Hello there, and thanks for being here with me on Tuesday, June the 30th of 2020. I've decided to start putting this reference in so that we know when, I don't know, 100 years from now when people are listening to this, they'll go, whoa, that was some weird stuff going on back in olden times. <laughs> Uh, I'm Lauren Foster, and I'm going to talk to you today about words. We're going to this. We're going to consider this the encyclopedic episode of the power of words. We're going to start all the way at the beginning with being impeccable to testing your words to choosing empowered words over weak words or disempowering words, and finally to the stories that you tell to others and to yourself. We need to start all of this off with a premise, with a question. That you need to ask yourself because it, it's the most important question of all. And that is, do you believe that you create your reality? That you are the creator of your life? Or you do you believe that life is something that is happening to you? Now, you don't have to believe this 100 total, 100% with total faith like I do after many years of doing this work, but some part of your mind has to believe that you're the co-creator with the universe of the life that you're making. Otherwise, none of the words that I say, none of this teaching, none of these activities are going to work for you because you don't believe that they're going to work. And so you know, don't even bother wasting your time. Now, the good news, however, is if you do believe that you are creating your reality, that you're the master of your life, then all of the things that we're teaching are going to come so much easier to you. So keep, keep this question in mind as we as we go through the topic today, because I'm going to pull this back up and say, so if you know that you're the creator of your reality, wouldn't you automatically choose this instead of this because you want to create this instead of that? Do you see what I mean? So, and again, this is never about blame. This is never about, oh, well, your life sucks because you created it that way. That's not what we're getting at. What we want is for you to be empowered to go, okay, my life like it is, is the life that I created up until now. And this is amazing news. I can take responsibility. I can take accountability and I can start now making a different choice because the life I create tomorrow is going to be the one I created too. And I get to do it differently if I want to, but it's so much easier and automatic to look at what is at reality, so to speak, and to generate thoughts and feelings and things that feel and look and behave like current reality. And therefore, we're just recreating what is over and over and over again. Life is never sitting still. It's always changing, but it can seem to be sitting still because it's just changing back to the same thing because we didn't change our thinking. We didn't change our perspective and our vibration in the world. So, Get intimate with this question and get, get honest with yourself about whether you truly believe that there is a possibility that you're the creator of your reality and then move forward from there. All right. So words, it's my favorite topic that the, the, the w- words are just such an easy topic to wrap your arms around because you can hear them. You can see them. You can, you can write them on a page. And they're an awesome representation of what we have created so far and of what we're about to create. Now, one caveat here is that words don't teach. I can talk to you all day long and words after words after words after words after words are never going to convince you of the truth of anything until you implement some of these words and experience it for yourself. And then you will learn. And then the other caveat is that it doesn't matter what words you're saying. It's the vibration that 
is what the universe hears and what is actually happening in your life. So if you say, I don't want to, I don't want to be in traffic. The universe doesn't hear that you don't want to be in traffic. It just hears this obsession and attention to traffic. And you're pretty much guaranteed to be in traffic. So that's a very simplistic Example, oh, I, I don't want to spill wine on this white shirt. I don't want to spill wine on this white shirt. I don't want to spill wine on this white shirt. Guaranteed pretty much to have wine on your white shirt. So it, it's, it's about the words, but it's really about the vibration. So pay attention to the things that you're thinking about and the things that you're saying. All right, so we started off, we always start off this topic with Don Miguel Ruiz and the Four Agreements, his amazing book that I recommend to everyone. And by the way, we'll, um, th this is episode 49. So if you go to BeHappyFirst.org forward slash 49, you'll find all of the links that we mentioned today, all of the resources, the video, the link to the podcast. Um, so be sure to like the Be Happy First page or subscribe to the podcast channel you're listening to or the YouTube channel or wherever you happen to be connecting with me. Be sure and latch on so that we can stay connected. And any freebie on the Be Happy First website, and there's a bunch of them, will get you onto our email list where all of the fun stuff happens, all of the intimate conversations and the insider things. And um, as we start to develop programs, you'll be the first to hear about these and get the best pricing. And so it, it's a good place to be. So get, get connected with us wherever you can. All right. So Don Miguel Ruiz, his, the first of the four agreements is to be impeccable with your word. And what, what Don Miguel means by that is to not use your words for casting dark spells, but to use your words for casting light spells. He talks about how our words are magic and that they can be white magic or they can be black magic. They can be uplifting and building up and creating beautiful things, or they can be damaging and tearing things down. Now, remember back to the original question. If you believe that you're creating your reality and you believe that your words have power, are you going to take a second before you speak words to your child? Are you going to take a chance on damaging the self-esteem and the self-respect and the sense of safety and security of your child by unkind words that you spoke in the heat of the moment that you didn't stop and consider? I don't think so. I think if you understand that one snappy phrase to your child could have giant magical benefits, then you're going to teach yourself to pause and choose your words before you utter those. The same thing anywhere in the world. If you know that you're creating your reality, that you're creating the world, are you going to speak words of hate? Are you going to stop and figure out a way to speak those words of love instead? You know, so that, that belief is really, really important. So Don Miguel, Don Miguel goes on to say that words are double-edged sword. The, the same thing, black or white magic, they can, they can be used to help or they can be used to harm. But the beautiful news is that we always get to choose and we can teach ourselves to pause before we choose our words by meditating. Meditation teaches your brain that you're in charge, that you get to say, whoa, this is not a thought that we're going to entertain or speak or really let into our reality at all. We're going to choose a different thought. We're going to choose a different message, a different feeling, a different way of wielding our magic in the world. Do you see? So just up over on the Be Happy First website, there are some free guided meditations to get you started if you are you know, not already a regular meditator or think you don't know how. It's easy. Anybody can do it. <laughs> Anytime. Okay. So being impeccable with your word is, is the number one thing. Just, you know, being aware, making a, a conscious choice to choose your words instead of just letting things flow out in a knee jerk reaction. And then the opposite is also true as far as standing guard at the portal of your mind and creating a, an environment in your mind where beautiful words can land and bloom and blossom and harmful, damaging, destructive words don't find fertile ground. They're, they're, they, they just kind of roll right off of you like water off a duck's back. Boy, we're in the nature analogies today, huh? <laughs> Gardens and ducks and raindrops. So 
if a constant bombardment of negative information, such as you will find on a 24-hour news channel, is being allowed to take root in your mind, then th this is going to become the reality of the things that you're going to create. And this is going to shape the way that you see the world. And I'm here to tell you it's not accurate that for every horrible event that you see on the news, there are trillions of things that are going right, that are beautiful, that are uplifting, that are kind and amazing. And all of those negative images don't get to get into your mind without your permission. So be the guardian of your mind and the guardian of your mouth. You know, watch what you say. Okay, so then the second portion of our encyclopedia of the power of words is to put your words to a test. Ask yourself these four things before you speak your words. First of all, is it true? Sounds simple? Not necessarily. I always like to go, if I'm going to use a quote or any reference anybody's information in any of my work, I go do my very best to go back and find the original source and make sure that this person really said that or that that really happened. And this isn't easy. So sometimes we have to go, you know, this is close enough. This is as close as I can get to the truth because it happened, you know, a thousand years ago when we didn't document things very well. So figuring out if something is true, gossip, conversations that you overheard, things that came to you by way of three other people, these are never true. That You can never, ever be able to get to the root of whether this information is factual or not. So it's never going to pass the first test. So voila, automatically we've created a world in which there's no gossip. And there's no backstabbing. There's no talking about each other behind each other's back. Um, gossip is never, ever useful or good or usually true. All right. So then if it's true, okay, then the second test is, is it kind? There's a whole lot of truth out there, reality out there, things that we can see and hear and smell and taste and touch that really isn't doing anybody any good. So are, are we going to give more attention to it and allow it to grow by our attention and by repeating it to other people? Is this, is this kind? Is this kindness? Is it the next step useful? A lot of times we, we say a lot of things just for the, for the sake of filling the silence and not serving anyone. So the, so far, is it true? Is it kind? Is it useful? And then finally, if, if our, what we're going to say, you know, this doesn't take the, takes way longer to tell you it than it does for you to actually run your words through this test in your mind. You know what I mean? So the final test is, does it improve upon the silence? And, you know, we, we live in such a noisy world. I, many years ago, my, my best friend was remodeling her house. And so she moved in with me for a few weeks and, she said, Lauren, it's never quiet here. You always have something going. There was always music or usually music going. It was never quiet. And back at that time, I was not at peace with my own thoughts. I wasn't at peace with what was going on in my head. So I always had things going on to drown it out so that I wasn't paying attention to it. And so that, that, that says a lot, right? That being able to be comfortable in silence and being comfortable with your own thoughts is a much more powerful place to be than trying to run away from what's going on inside your own head, right? So the fourth step is, does it improve upon the silence? Is this, you know, what What if we were just sitting here alone or together, just enjoying the the perfect silence of this perfect moment and not feeling the need to fill it with sound? with noise. So the four steps, is it true? Is it kind? Is it useful? And does it improve upon the silence? All right. All right. So then we go to empowered words over disempowering words. We, uh, the, the, I love to say that the most disempowering sentence in the world is, I can't do this because I have to do that. Now, there's not going to be any words that we're going to eliminate. They all have their uses because way back in the beginning of this episode, I said, if you're going to get any use out of this training, you have to believe this. And it's true. So 
It's not that you have to do anything, but sometimes in order to get a consequence, you you have to perform the action. So if you want to have your body clean, you have to take a shower. <laughs> you know, so uh, our, our words are not going to get eliminated, but I choose to be clean, so I choose to take a shower. It, it's all, you know, beautiful sort of harmony of the, the words that we're going to choose. But you can do anything you want. And you don't have to do anything. So choosing instead to say empowered words, like I, and instead of I can't say I choose not to, I, I won't, I don't want to, I'm not going to. It's, you know, it's all, it sounds like semantics, but listen to the, the feeling of those different words. Listen to how it feels when you say I can't. You're weak. You are putting yourself as a victim and ha not having the power to choose. Whereas if you say, I won't, you're choosing. You're the, you're the powerful creator of whatever is going to happen in your life in that next segment. So I won't. I choose not to. I want to do this instead. Thanks very much. You know, sometimes we're saying words, you know, we're going along to getting along, to get along. We are sacrificing our truth in order to spare someone else's feelings and you know i'm not going to say that's a bad thing because it's not because sometimes there's kindness but we can always revert to silence so there, there's really almost never and never and always and you know these definitive line in the sand kind of words never please me either because there's always exceptions and you know there there's we're not making moral judgments about things. We're not saying, oh, this is right and that's wrong. This is good and that's bad. This is in service of your goals and dreams or it's not in service of your goals and dreams. So really interesting things to talk about. Okay, so finally, at the end of the day, all of this word talk is expanding into and coagulating, if you will, into the stories that we tell. So you can look back over your day and tell a story that is perfectly true and perfectly horrible. You could pick out all the things that went bad about your day and tell the story in that way and put yourself in the vibration of all the things that went wrong in that day. By the same token, you can look at the same exact day and tell the story of the things that went the way you wanted them to, the things that you succeeded at, the great ideas you got, the great conversations you had. The, I, the, there was a moment one day when I, I was in a drugstore. I don't, I don't even remember where I was, but the moment sticks in my mind so, so incredibly well. that So I, I was walking down the aisle and I saw this beautiful mother looking down at her baby and so I, I looked at the mother and I looked at the baby and it was a beautiful baby you know just all dressed so sweet and happy and comfy and it was just a beautiful sight and I smiled and as I smiled my eyes went back to the mother and she smiled back at me with this look that said yeah I understand exactly what you're smiling about I so get it you know and you know I just took 30 seconds to tell that story that is so uplifting and so just heartwarming and so about nothing but beautiful. So it was absolutely true. I did have that experience. It was totally kind. It was, it was totally useful because it was giving you an example of how the simplest things, even that don't have any words, can be amazingly uplifting and how to tell that kind of story. So the same thing about your life, that the story that you're telling about the life that you've lived so far and about the life that you're living in your future. So th these are stories that we're telling out loud, but they're more importantly, the stories that you're telling yourself. Are you, are you telling yourself a story of failure, of your shortcomings, of your mistakes, of the, the things that you didn't get right? Or... Are you telling yourself the story that every single thing that you have done has been taking you along this amazing path that's on its way somewhere beautiful and that you're so loving the journey and you know that those weren't failures because you're not done yet, that you, you aren't finished becoming what you're going to become and you're never going to be finished becoming what you 
are, are going to become. So you're, you're getting to choose day by day by day the stories that you're going to tell. And don't tie yourself to reality in this case. So I know I'm contradicting myself, but I am building an empire. I am building an amazing business. I am creating an amazing, beautiful, healthy body. I am becoming the master of my health. I am becoming a best-selling author. I am creating a movement that's going to help a million women. Are those things reality? Not yet, but they're going to be because that's the story that I'm going to keep telling. I'm going to keep telling the story of meeting people who are going to help me amplify this message, meeting other people who have the same message that so we're going to amplify that together. And we're going to teach you all to be happy and free on purpose. One million of you women out there and together we're going to completely change the world. This is the story that I'm telling. So what story are you telling? What credit are you giving yourself for the things that you've accomplished so far? What positivity are you choosing to project out into your future and the world that you're creating by the stories that you choose to tell today. So empower yourself to tell the story of the way you want things to be, the way that you are going to you are going to create your life to be that you are creating your life to be by your attention to it, by choosing your perspective, by choosing your words. And so one of the, so I'm, I'm learning to speak Spanish and that's, I, I have been learning to speak Spanish for 20 years. <laughs> so I, but I haven't, I haven't failed because I haven't given up and I haven't quit. And so it always brings to mind that sometimes things are lost in translation with words, especially if you are using a different language and that's why your vibration is so important. So you know, if, if I am speaking Spanish and I think that I'm asking where the restroom is, <laughs> um, but I'm really saying something else entirely, chances are I'm going to make myself understood through my vibration, through the nonverbal communication that connects us as human beings. And I actually know this to be true because I've experienced it in, in communicating with people who we didn't speak the same language. So, it's all a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful journey, and our, our words are helping us to identify what we are in the process of creating and help us to choose what we're going to create in the future. So use them wisely and have fun. Have fun with this. You know, which, which words feel better? Does it feel better to me to say, um, I love it so much when you turn the music down so I can sleep? Or... Would you please turn off that horrible music and stop being so inconsiderate? Same message. Which one feels better? You know, you can always ask that question. Does it feel better to say things this way or does it feel better to say things that way? You get to choose. All right, so I'm going to have an amazing guest here on Thursday. Her name is Lauren Polly, and she's the author of The Other Side of Bipolar, which is all about changing the way we look at mental illness and I have air quotes around that because we're gonna she's gonna talk to us about how we can tear away the labels and tear away the the um confinement of a diagnosis and a label and things like that so that's going to be Thursday's episode we'll we'll share more about that as time goes on and I hope that you'll be here with us that's on Thursday at 11 30 eastern time we're live on Facebook but then this message gets shared everywhere else so get hooked up with us you can always just start at behappyfirst.org and click anywhere in that website and it will take you to freebies to ways to get on our email list ways to get signed up and connected with us. So I'm going to see you back here on Thursday. In the meantime, remember happiness is a choice and you can always choose to be happy first. I'll see you soon.